The features of Blender 3.5 are now finalized, and all that's left is bug fixes, with the final version being released in around a month. So I'm going to cover what's new, as you guys seem to like the last one. Let's start with animation and rigging. There's a new pin icon that's added to the dope sheet used to pin channels. There are also two new operators to select link vertices in weight paint mode. There's also a new ability to press L to select vertices under the cursor, or Control L to select anything linked to the current selection. There's a new motion path frame option called Manual Range. This, when chosen, will not automatically update the path range anymore. The start slash end frame fields are now grayed out in the UI when one of the automatic range options is selected, at least all of them but the new manual range option. The pose library has had some improvements, most notably is that E will now allow you to go over 100% of the pose value. The propagate pose has been updated, earlier it would evaluate each F curve individually to find the target key. This had unwanted behavior due to the keys not being the same frame, but now it will find the first frame by checking all F curves in question and then propagates the pose to it. A keyframe will be added in case it doesn't exist. Now to Grease Pencil, the sculpt auto masking has been moved to global settings. There's a new auto masking pie menu with the hotkey being shift option A. Interpolate sequence has been updated to use all keyframes on its default setting, along with there being a new exclude breakdowns option. Copy and paste now works in multi-frame mode. Vertex opacity parameter is now visible in the overlay panel, a new option to see brush size is now available in the draw tool cursor. You can now create a new layer and use Y in drawing mode and it will allow you to enter a new name. Material popover now displays fill color for fill materials. Offset can now be added by layer, stroke, and material to the offset modifier. There's also a natural drawing speed in the build modifier. Now to the big one, nodes, which is now mixing with physics, at least kind of in this update. There's a new image info node that allows retrieving various information about an image. There's a new image input node. The named attribute input node now has an exist output to tell whether the attribute even exists. A new blur attribute node allows mixing attribute values of neighboring elements. The stored name attribute node can now store 2D vector attributes. The image texture node has a new mirror extension type. The field utility nodes have been renamed. Interpolate domain is now evaluate on domain. And field at index is now evaluate at index. The modifier user interface has been tweaked, one of which is that exposed properties from the node group will no longer have a hard min and max values as in they will continue past the specific value that typically stops you from going any farther unless you type in a value. Checkboxes are now used for exposed boolean sockets. The use attribute toggles have moved to the right edge of the panel. Drag and drop is now supported for a geometry node group assets in the viewport. A new operator move to nodes creates a new node group wrapping the modifiers group. The interpolate curves node now allows you for generating child curves between a set of guides. The trim curves node has a selection input. The edges to faces find groups of faces surrounded by selected edges. The mesh primitive node now outputs a UV map and names the attribute with a hard code name. Select edges nodes is faster. For mesh objects, applying modifiers will now give you an error if the geometry it creates doesn't contain a mesh. Automatically attaching nodes after adding or moving them can be disabled by holding option. Copy and paste nodes are placed at the mouse position rather than their original origins. Like seriously, finally this one is a thing. Happy about that one. Node links can be swapped between sockets by holding option when connecting them. Whoa, okay, that was a lot. But now for simulation nodes. At the moment, it doesn't really appear to be a thing in Blender 3.5 and should have already been implemented if it was going to be added. 
So take this with a grain of salt, the, but I don't think it will be added. It may be in one of the branches, but again, supposedly all that's left in Blender 3.5 is bug fixes. If I'm wrong, I'll have an update in the comments. Anyways, leaving geometry nodes and physics, the new OBJ importer got split by objects and split by groups import settings, and can import polylines with more than two vertices. The asset browser has had some updates. One notable change is that it will now display content from all of the other asset libraries. Cycles has had yet another big update. The main thing that stands out is that Cycles now uses Light Tree to more effectively sample scenes, essentially less noise with slightly longer render times. Oh, and it's also going to be enabled by default, and here's a comparison for those of you who like that. The last feature worth mentioning is support for VDM brushes, also known as Vector Displacement Brushes. This, if used correctly, can dramatically speed up sculpting. Anyways, that's really the majority of the features, but there's of course more minor features which can be read over at the release logs. Anyways, thanks for watching, let me know if I should continue doing these as they are quite time consuming. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Bye!